Oh, hello again everyone, welcome back, thanks for visiting once again. Um, I just wanted to give you a quick um, follow-on uh, video from uh, the the last one I did which had to do with masking, um, which I've had some, some great comments from, so thanks very much. Um, first one was from Nigel uh, at Nigel's Modelling Bench. Now um, I'm using these masks courtesy of Nigel because he was the man who provided them to me via Sven at One Man Army. Um, so without his generosity and his kind uh, kindness um, none of this would be possible and I wouldn't be talking about masks at all but I am and lucky me so I'm, I'm very fortunate so big shout out to him um, you'll all know Nigel anyway I'm sure so um, I, I still will say that I think it's worthwhile doing um, I've moved on a little bit since the last um, film as well because I, I started to get into actually putting these things in and I've done some masking on both sides. Um, I've learnt a few tricks since then and, and uh, the, um, the use of um, uh, overlap tape or, or um, um, you know tape to put on top of a, um, a mask is, is extremely beneficial particularly when you're putting on lettered masks like this so the particular example I'll give you is the DW marking here so of course the DW marking has a, a solid out D part here that you, you're never going to put in square and straight without a, um, a um, an overlap mask so what you do is I'll show you that um, just quickly um, you pull out your mask you put your bit of tape over the top of it and seal it down then draw the mask off itself um, and then uh, you can then pull the letters off first if you want or you could do it afterwards I did it first and then what you have is this sort of aspect here with the DW underneath it you can then place the DW as you see fit and then away you go from there so it's it, it looks a bit daunting on the surface of it but it's actually quite straightforward when you when you actually get to do it so you can then you have to push all these down against these raised panel lines and rivet lines and so on and so forth here but once you've done that that's pretty straightforward as you can see my K is a bit pissed um, it's a bit off center so I need to take that off and do that again but I have some spare K's so that I suppose if you'll forgive me is okay um, on the port side here I have removed the cockpit door so that I can put the mask for the DW on here and I've also placed the roundel the initial roundel mask for this now this is a, a curved and compound surface so I can only do one roundel at a time so I'm gonna have to do it that way but the K went down really easily um, there and that looks that looks I think quite good so before very long we should have something that looks and approximates to a Spitfire proper with all its markings on it now I did get one question on the um, uh, on, on the on the comments from one of one of the contributors I won't say who it is but he was asking about the colors and what I did on um, on the internet a friendly local internet to me was I found some some color masks uh, or some color uh, mixings for the Tamiar paints or Tamiya depending on what part of the world you hail from um, welcome if you're from beyond the English borders of course um, so I've got a few here now I'm gonna, I'm gonna just hold that up and you can pause that and then take a look at that it saves me from reading it out so there's that um, and I'll go down a little bit further here um, the big advantage for this is that there are also other markings for other types of um, aircraft um, and they're here so colors for, for example Royal Navy's fleet air arm aircraft um, and that includes the Vought built Corsairs um, and I have a, a an F4U1A that I'm going to build and I'm going to do it in um, in the um, in the Vault colours for the fleet air arm and I've actually got some decals for that so that's quite nice um, so again you can pause that and take a look at that but you've got all the XF numbers um, and you can get there don't worry about these colours here that's because my printer's up the, um, up the creek um, and has no paddle so um, I generally only tend to print things in um, uh, in in black and white anyway, or black actually in terms of the colouring. So that was that, and that was that was quite an important um, important little aspect because what I've done with these um, these blue here is I've done the the colour mix for the blue, 
um, and I'll do the color mix for all the others as well. Um, it's reasonably involved, but um, if I get the planning right, and that's the key here, which is the planning, then I should be able to simply go over and then paint all the reds that I want, paint all the blues that I want, paint all the whatever, whatever, whatever that I want, and, and go from there. Uh, and that's my uh, that's my hope anyway, but uh, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. So there we are, quick update for you. Um, hopefully that um, covers off all the bases there. Um, and um, finally, just to say thanks for all the people subscribing. Um, great to, to get you on board and to, to have you coming along and looking at what I'm doing. Um, I hope you're enjoying it. I'm certainly having a good time doing this and um, I'll keep doing it until someone tells me to stop, um, which I hope is um, far into the future maybe. So uh, there we go. So thanks once again everybody and um, look forward to catching up with you on the next one um, when I can show you perhaps just a, a little bit more progress. Take care for now. Bye bye.